you know what you should do. You should follow me on Twitter at Brummer018. Link in the description. Do it now. Hello everyone, welcome along to a, another video. Brummer here, as always. Thanks for joining me today in what is a FIFA 21 tutorial. I'm focusing on stamina in particular. So, I get a lot of questions on um, basically all my, my tactics videos through this series where we recreate real tactics on FIFA. And a lot of people, in particular on the constant pressure systems, talk about how uh, stamina runs out very easily. And it's something that EA have sort of... Uh, doubled down on this year they have made quite a few tweaks to that uh, and so it does degrade a lot easier so really I want to give you some some tips and tricks today um, now we do have one for FIFA 20 as well and the reason why I'm doing another one uh, today is uh, one because a lot of people seem to still be having the issue and two because I've got a couple more um, sort of tips and, and different things to, to go about it that I didn't cover in that video last year. Um, so it's really more of an updated version than anything. So um, we are using Bayern Munich today and the reason why is because we have done a tactics video on them recently um, and as you can see if I go into their uh, tactics here they do have constant pressure with those new that, that new customized system. So they're a very you know sort of extreme gig and pressing team. So I think these are a very sort of uh, handy to, to use so um, first things first in terms of a tip um, for people who you know aren't reliant on constant pressure and for this case we are going to use it anyway so it's okay if you do use it but for anyone who isn't do consider changing to one of these maybe press after possession loss or pressure on heavy touch and what you can do is you can actually change it in game um, to make to put team press on through the d-pad options um, so you know for a 10 15 second period or what have you they will press um, so that's for anyone who isn't reliant on that. Um, but for the sake of this video, for anyone who uses constant pressure, we will be doing that today. Um, so first things first, what I want to talk to you about is resting in possession. So what that is, and it's something that you'll see sort of up and down the just in football in general is teams resting in possession. And what that is, is when they'll just get the ball and they'll just start gradually passing it around and what this does is it just helps you to regain stamina uh, regain your energy you're not exerting too much in the early stages just passing it around a little bit you can probe for an opening as well so if you do see an opening it will come um, in which case you know you can you can offload the ball but it's something that you're starting to see thankfully more and more sort of uh, teams doing in general and also up and down academies as well and um, what you want to do here is you want to do it for around about maybe like a four five minute period in game so if you're playing on five minute halves six minutes seven minute halves what what have you um, you want to do it for around about four to five minutes so we have sort of completed that now and then you can go on and you want to do this about roughly f two three maybe even four times per game depending on you know what it requires and i know a lot of people will will look at that and say well you know it, it's just kind of like passing the ball around for no reason you're wasting a bit of time but the reason why you're not wasting time is because it is allowing you to to freshen your players up to recover a little bit of fitness a little bit of stamina um, and so you can go for longer in the game so it does have a purpose to it and it's not a case of you know well um you've got to just pass it around if you do see an opening then you can take that and then you know fantastic you know you've worked an opening but if not then you know you're just recovering stamina and like i say you want to do this about three or four times a game um, and you'll notice some massive massive changes in results so the third tip i want to give you guys is to keep the ball moving now what I mean by this is, and, and this will apply to some people more than others, and what I used to do on the game is, let's say we get to about the midfield third and I'm waiting for someone to make a run, um, I'll start just doing, just sort of doing this. I'll stay with one guy on the ball and I'll just start jogging around waiting for something to happen. Now what you'll notice is, if you look at Davis's stamina bar for example now, you'll see that when he's just jogging on the ball simply, that's really having a, a massive impact on his stamina. It's taking it down quite a bit. And so what you want to do is, you just got to keep passing it, keep the ball moving, keep the ball rolling, let the ball do the work. And as you'll see, it's taking a lot less out of stamina compared to if you have a look at Pavard here and I'm just jogging around. You know, it's taking it down quite a bit. Keep the ball moving, keep probing for an opening through your passing, not through just sort of jogging around. And like I said, this applies to some people more than others, but it was something that I used to do quite a lot, uh, which was just 
trying to be patient, but because of that, you're just sort of jogging around a little bit. Um, no, the best thing is you've just got to keep passing the ball, keep on probing for your opening. Eventually, you will work an opening. If Goretzka would have made the run there like he should have, um, you know, we would have been through one on one. So we're now at half time, a little bit further into the game, and this is where I want to move on to my next tip, tip number four, and that is about moving players around on the pitch. So what I mean by this is, is that you'll know some roles are more sort of stamina dependent than others. For example, in this system, we've got Goretzka as that sort of boxer box midfielder. We've got him on get forward, so he's going to be tracking back and bursting forward a lot. There's going to be a lot of ground that he's covering. Whereas Kimmich, on the other hand, he's on stay back while attacking. And as you can see, this has had a you know prominent effect on the stamina now you also have to bear in mind obviously his stamina is higher than Goretzka so that will bear in mind as well we're not to the point where you know Goretzka is almost in yellow now pretty much and Kimmich is, has almost got a full bar um, so what you want to do here is is I believe that Goretzka could also play this role as the more defensive player and Kimmich can play the, as the box of box um, and that's handy having a versatile team and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually switch these guys over um, and so you'll notice that Goretzka's stamina in the second half will go down less and Kimmich's will go down a bit more and as a result we sort of even that um, you know that, that drop off out um, to such a good effect and this is handy in terms of what you're signing whether you're on career mode or um, the game mode that we don't mention um, you know, sign players that are, are relatively versatile. You can move them around in game. You can move the pieces around. Again, we've got Thomas Muller here. Now, the stamina here for the for the attackers is is, is not bad. It's fine. So that's that's not a problem. But um, Thomas Muller can play on the right. You know, no problem at all. So I would have no hesitation putting him out onto the right hand side maybe switching the instructions a little bit maybe we get him to to come short rather than getting behind uh, maybe on free roam as well so you would have to do a little bit of switching around with the player instructions but you've got that versatility you can bring him out to the right he'll cover more more ground so we track him back a little bit more running him in behind a little bit uh less compared to the the other what the winger would have ganabri um and so you can go with that so we're quite a bit further into the game now, as you can see, 75th minute, currently winning 1-0. And if you have a look at the stamina, it's not too bad, actually, as you know, because we have been using those tips. We've messed around a little bit. I did bring Muller back in in the end uh, because the stamina uh, for those those guys is actually quite good. It's all right. Uh, as you can see, the fullbacks may be struggling a little bit, such as the distance they cover. Um, and the first thing I want to say is, you know, use your subs bench. At this point in the game, and it, it sounds obvious, but a lot of people sort of forget about this more. Not so much that they just don't want to. They, they just sort of forget they're getting into the game and stuff. Um, you know, tensions running are blah, blah, blah. Um, and then they just sort of forget to use it. And, you know, what I would say is, you know, you've got to use it a bit more. So, for example, what we can do here is we can bring on Hernandez for, for Davis. Maybe we can switch him out for Alaba. We can keep them. It doesn't really matter who goes who goes where to be fair. I suppose Alaba would be a little bit more suited to that role, but we'll go with Hernandez there. Um, elsewhere, we can bring on... Who can we bring on? We can bring on Taliso for... Or Javi Martinez for Goretzka. In fact, we, yeah, we'll go with we'll go with Martinez, actually. We can bring him into that defensive midfield role. And just use your subs bench, you know. Not a problem at all. And it's just something that happens. It's a realistic sort of alternative, isn't it? You'll see managers doing that all the time. You know, if you want to supplement this sort of stamina uh, management, then... You know, you have got to use the, the entire depth of your squad. And that's why it's so important to have depth as well. Um, players on the bench who can come in and fill that sort of role. And that sort of ties in with the next thing. is As you can see, with Davis and Pavard. So Davis's stamina is 79 and Pavard's is also 79. As you can see, they're pretty tired. Um, and so, again, it's quite obvious, but it's something that's very, very much needed. Sign players with high stamina. You know, 80 plus is what... I'm always looking for and whenever you see any of my tactics videos and I use the suitable players to suggest transfers uh, in the video, often in these sort of systems, I'll always look for players who have high stamina and that, that, will, that will be part of the sort of criteria for finding those players because if you're playing such a, an intense system that requires a lot of ground coverage, a lot of movement um, and a high intensity, the, you know, low stamina players won't fit in. If we have, I mean, look at Boateng, he's the next who's sort of um, you know, waning in terms of stamina. He only plays at centre-back, you know. He doesn't cover as much ground as, as some of these other guys, but he's on 60 stamina. 
and he's waning, you know, so you've got to bear that in mind, because um, if we compare that to someone like Alaba, he's on pretty much half his stamina, and he only has 75, um, but he's on pretty much half of his energy levels, um, and that, you know, compare that to Boateng, who's, who's starting to really struggle now, he's on 60, um, you know, there's quite a difference, as you can see, so, you know, bear that in mind as well, sign players with high stamina. Right, so guys, we are now at the end of the game. We did win 2-0 at the end. And my final sort of notice here is, it's not so much a tip, but more of a notice. And that is, you know, come the end of a game, expect your players to be on low stamina. You know, expect them to be, majority-wise, on, on, like, maybe nearly in the red or, or at least in the orange. You know, because I think some people sort of fall into the trap of thinking, well, if they're, they're low by the end of a game, then it hasn't worked. But no, no, that's just that's just replicating how the, the sort of real circumstances. You know, they will be tired at the end of a game. They'll, particularly if you've covered so much ground, you played such a high tempo. Um, you know, they will be low on stamina. That's just sort of thing. The, the thing you want to avoid is is the bar not being empty. If the bar is empty, that's when you know the stamina. Um, you know, it's sort of been degraded too much. But if if they're only on low, red to orange, that's okay. You know, that that's serviceable and that's enough just to get you through to the end of the game. So. You know that's that's really a few tips, um, and it's sort of a workaround. As you can see, we had a we had a lot of possession. The whole the resting in possession thing helps. We did that sort of two or three times during the game, uh, but it also calms the game down a little bit as well because you know it's just so crazy uh, the defending, so end to end on this game, really really sort of annoying and tough to deal with. Um, so it does just sort of settle that down as well, and that's something worth bearing in mind. Um, but other than that, though, I think that's round about it. You know, hopefully these these tips helps you, and if if you've got any sort of anything else you want to ask questions about then do sort of let me know um you know no problem at all um please be sure to check out any of my tactics videos um that i've done already and that i will do in the future where we recreate real systems um in fifa 21 and i'll show you how to effectively do that um to the best of my ability please do leave a like on the video if you've enjoyed it and most importantly subscribe to the channel as well for more regular gaming content don't forget to hit the bell so that you get notifications as well give me a follow on twitter if you have it link is in the description and on that note we are going to finish it there thank you so much for watching and until next time i'll see you soon